What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. The Toronto Raptors are just a few games now into the 2021 NBA preseason. And although these games can only be taken with a grain of salt, there's definitely some key early takeaways that I have regarding this new look Toronto Raptors roster. Today we're going to be going over the hype around the size of the Toronto Raptors and how I believe that could benefit the way that they run their offense in the upcoming season. Then we'll move on to Gary Trent Jr., how I think he could fit into their scheme and how that balances with Goran Dragic. And then we'll be finishing up the video with just some key other takeaways about other players on the Raptors roster. Just before we do get into the video though, as always, if you do enjoy today's video, please make sure to do me a huge favor, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. The first thing that I want to get into is how the height will help the Raptors offense this season. Now, when looking at the Raptors roster and really throughout the entire offseason, a big talking point has been the height that they have really throughout their entire rotation, which makes sense because the Raptors really tried to prioritize that this offseason through the number of free agency moves and roster fillouts that they made. Um, and even in the NBA draft, out of everybody that they added this offseason, no player was under six foot three in height. So definitely prioritizing that size. Now, most people talk about that size in terms of defense and how it's going to benefit them on that side of the ball, how the combination of the size and athleticism is going to allow them to give, uh, you know, the opposing offenses some interesting matchups and interesting looks. And that's definitely true, no doubt about it. But I believe this also has a massive benefit for the offense. And let me explain why. First of all, last season, the Raptors ranked number 18 in the NBA in offensive rebounding percentage. In my opinion, this is a crucial stat for the Raptors because although they have a ton of offensive talent on paper, they can also be extremely inefficient. They come off a year in which they only rank number 18 in the league in terms of true shooting percentage, and you have no Lowry this year. So what does that mean? Well, you got to put more emphasis on some guys in your offense that have never been number one options and who have never been top options in terms of the offensive side of the ball in an offense. Um, teams like previous Raptors teams even, you know, don't really prioritize offensive boards and, and hustle type boards because, you know, they'd rather just get set back on defense. But I think given the size, given the athleticism, given the speed of the Raptors this year, they can no doubt get extra possessions, which could be a difference in terms of the Raptors offensive efficiency. Another area I think their offense changes is at the beginning of possessions, where the Raptors adapt something similar to what we see with the box and the way that they use Giannis, allowing bigger guys to take the ball up the court. Uh, after defensive rebounds. Historically, you know, we see teams allow their big guys grab rebounds, set their feet, turn, pass the ball to sort of a guard or a smaller player who walks the ball up the court. But what we've seen at times from the Raptors already this pre this preseason is letting the rebounder, um, who's a bit bigger, you know, a guy like Scotty Barnes, use that size, speed, and athleticism to, you know, make a more up-tempo offense, drive, drive into the lane, potentially catch defenses off guards and or off guard and get some easy baskets or you know you keep your passing options open so I think um using the bigger guys in more versatile ways I think opens up what the Raptors are able to do on offense and it's also something that you don't really see a ton in the NBA right now Next up, could Gary Trent Jr. be coming off the bench, at least at the beginning this season for the Raptors? Now, coming off a season in which you extend the contract of Gary Trent Jr., um, give him a bit more than he probably should have gotten, this might be coming as a bit of a confusing question for a lot of Raptors fans. But hear me out. After missing the first preseason game for the Raptors, Gary Trent Jr. made his debut on Thursday in the second game of a home-and-home -home against the 76ers. In that game, Gary Trent Jr. came off the bench. In 22 minutes, he scored 12 points, 5 of 12 shooting. Um, continuing the narrative from last season that, yes, Gary Trent Jr. can score the basketball, but he can also be efficient, at least inefficient at certain times. While well, Goran Dragic might not be the same player that we saw in his prime, he no doubt has a better ability to facilitate the basketball than Gary Trent Jr. does. He averaged 4.4 assists last season, and with no Siakam in the beginning or no Siakam in the lineup at the beginning of the season, it might be better to put another playmaker in with the starters. Goran Dragic also brings a, what you would expect to be some much needed leadership and veteran experience to a very, very young Raptors team, which is one of the youngest teams in the entire NBA. And with both Boucher and Siakam out, you have um, Barnes probably starting in the starting lineup, and then young players like Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi, and Kem Birch rounding out the starting five. With Siakam back, I expect Gary Trent Jr. to be starting at the two. 
because he helps space out the floor. You know, he's a great spot up shooter. But for now, I think Drogic at the two, maybe even the one is definitely something to consider. And it could help raise his trade stock because you expect Goran Drogic to be uh, traded probably at some point before the trade deadline. Last but not least, let's go to some key takeaways of some of the other players on the Raptors roster getting it kicked off with Scotty Barnes. So far, uh, we've seen the first couple of games from Scotty Barnes outside of the Summer League, and he's already showcased his ability to affect the game in a variety of different ways. In his first game, we saw a plus 19, plus minus leading the Raptors during his 25 minutes. The hustle of Scotty Barnes is something that you absolutely love to see as Raptors fans, but my only concern would be that the eight fouls that he's picked up in only two games so far, some being sloppy ones, you know, Scotty Barnes is a fantastic defender. He's a hustle player, high energy, but you got to be able to pick your spots, and I think that's something that's going to come with more experience. Next up, OG Ananobi, of course, coming off a career year last year. I think we saw a lot of improvements last season, including his um, shooting ability, particularly from beyond the arc. So far in the first two games of the preseason, he's put up a combined 43 points in 55 minutes of play. And with no Siakam in the beginning of the or in the lineup at the beginning of the year, OG is no doubt going to be tasked with being really the go-to guy, I think, on offense. Um, but this year in general, I'd love to see him can continue to develop into that great two-way player that he that we know that he can be um, but particularly on the offensive side of the ball I love to see you know those higher point amounts and I would love to see that translate into the regular season last but not least Precious Achua a lot of eyes are going to be on Precious because he was the main piece in the return package for Kyle Lowry um, another guy who fits the the sort of identity of the Raptors um, he's another athletic big man who's a really great defender and he showcased that in the early part of the preseason first two games uh, a combined 15 rebounds and five steals and just under 50 minutes of play definitely shows promise off the bench definitely shows promise to continue to improve and potentially be the Raptors center of the future um, so a lot that we've seen so far um, you know, a lot to keep an eye on for the rest of the preseason and into the NBA regular season as well. Expectations aren't too, too high on the Raptors, but I said this in previous videos. Um, I think they still got a very, very high ceiling. You got a bunch of guys who I think you don't exactly know what you're going to get from them, um, but a ton of guys with a lot of potential. The Raptors management knows what they're doing. The Raptors are definitely moving into the right direction. And to be honest, I love the complexion of the roster this year. I love this defensive identity, but I think they got so much potential on the offense offensive side of the ball so um it's gonna be really really fun really really interesting so um yeah we'll have to wait and see um but anyways that's all for today if you guys did enjoy today's video please make sure to do me a huge favor smash that thumbs up button subscribe to touchdowns to home runs we're going to be covering the toronto raptors um throughout the rest of the preseason all throughout the nba regular season so you definitely won't want to miss out um but as always guys thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you guys again next time